and try to inflict as much damage as possible to every single of those enemies. Little wind attack. So that's what you want to do as late game hunter ranger. Just go and use relevant attacks nearby enemies. Hail and Meshes Adventures, I greet you in the world of Baldur's Gate 3, it's Spot King. And today we're looking on Ranger build. So let's build our Ranger from level 1 to level 12 and I show you my build for Hunter Ranger. It's very good and versatile class that can extend with melee weapons and of course balls, range weapons. So someone asked me in the comments, do Ranger build like melee one and range one? And actually, why not to do boost? Ranger can use boost weapons just as nice. So let's go and make our Ranger. So when you pick in class for a Ranger, good pick will be Orc, half Orc exactly. Because half Orc will get relentless endurance and savage attacks. So basically you can start your fight with a ball, start your fight from the range and then extend and go into middle range and do a lot of critical strikes. But just for role playing purposes, I recommend going with Wood Elf because we get additional movement speed and it's nice too. Our class is Ranger, of course, we can't pick our subclass instantly, and we instantly can pick our Natural Explorer. While you can, can pick Beast Tamer, actually, there's no use with this build, so I recommend to stick with Urban Tracker for proficiency with Sleight of Hand. Or go into any wasteland of your choice for fire or cold damage, whatever you like. But for my build, we will stick with Urban Tracker and we're picking our favorite enemy. But here, all you will have is different proficiency. So, most of the time, we can pick Mage Breaker to have proficiency in Arcana. We don't need it actually. And we can cast True Strike. But again, True Strike is not like one of the best spells you will have. So, Bounty Hunter is the way to go. We will get, we'll get proficiency in Investigation. And creatures you will hit with Ensnaring Strike, melee or range, no matter, will have disadvantage on the saving throw. So, Ensnaring Strike is nice yeah. ability. So, why not to have this stuff? Background is Soldier for Athletics and Intimidation. And let's go to our abilities. Allocating our skill points into Animal Handling, Nature and Survival, or even more into Insight, whatever you like more. And for our points, we just dump Strange, we dump Int, and we dump Charisma. And we get plus 2 into Dex, and we get plus 1 into Wisdom. So we got a lot of Wisdom, because we need it for our great spells that require Constitution. We need Constitution, because we like health points. and. We need a lot of decks because our main weapon is ball and other weapons uh, that stuck with dexterity that gaining advantage and more damage with dexterity is our weapons of choice. And just like that, our ranger ready to go. But let's level up first. So level two. When you get level two, that's when you get your ranger spell slot and you will get two spells. So don't forget we picked it that gives additional chances to hit ensnaring strike so we definitely pick an ensnaring strike and we will use hunter's mark hunter's mark is like warlock's hex so basically you put this mark on your creature of your choice and every time you're doing damage you will deal additional 1d6 slashing damage pretty easy straightforward stuff but now we can pick our fighting style. And when you're playing Hunter, I actually advise you to pick Archer. Still, you will have nice damage from melee attacks, but your main and starting weapon will be always a bow. So just like that, let's go to level 3. And on level 3, you finally can pick your subclass. And our subclass of choice for today's build is Hunter. And here I got builds for every subclass, every class, and it will be in the pinned comment just when they ready. So you will get ability to get one more spell and I recommend to pick Goodberry, it's nice healing spell for you and your party. And you can pick Hunter's Prey, so you got three choices. Horde Breaker will give you ability to target two creatures that standing nearby, but it's a little bit situational, you need to like clumped up groups of enemies and other stuff, but if you're fighting one single big boss it's not very useful, but Giant Killer will be useful if you fighting larger or big creature but most useful stuff is actually colossus slayer it's just basic and once per turn your weapon attacks deals extra 1d8 damage if target is below its hit point maximum so if you somehow 
find any wounded enemies, you just go attack them and deal additional 1d8, just like that. So, let's go and show you how this ranger looks in early game fights. So, before fight I recommend to use spells, and all spells is always prepared for ranger, so you can use them whenever you like. For example, you can use Goodberry, and the spell will use spell slot, so you won't be able to use any spells in the fight. And they regenerate every time you go in for the long rest. So when you go to camp, they will regenerate and you can use them again. But let's go to the fight. So in a fight as a ranger, you already as level 3 ranger need to pick targets that is already wounded to have ability to inflict more damage with your awesome Colossus Slayer feat. But right now it will be easy fight, so I can't show you that. I will just recommend you to do just Hunter's Mark as your bonus section on any enemy of your choice and then just attack it. So you attack and you inflict a lot of damage, so let me show you what actually happened. We just did 12 piercing damage, how it happening. So it's making our attack roll with our bow, it's making 1d6 damage, plus our dexterity modifier, so it's plus 3 and plus 5 from one more roll of Hunter's Mark, and that's totally will be 12 damage on this level already. And that's only with short bow. So for my build I actually recommend to stick with the long bow, it's like largest damage bow in the game, and basically largest damage bow, and pick a weapon that you will be proficient with that will stack with dexterity, so some scimitars and other stuff will work for your melee attacks. And just like that, you end your turn as your ranger. So next you just go and use a reapply Hunter's Mark. Be actually very careful here. Don't use just Hunter's Mark, because it will use your spell slot, but you get reapply Hunter's Mark if you killed enemy that was marked before. So you can use it without expanding and actually using spell slot. And just like that, you kill another enemy and get your Hunter's Mark back and you can do this as much time as you like, if you keep in your concentration and killing targets one by one. And by the way, don't forget after the fight, use your good berries and share them with your party members to heal yourself and your party members after the fight. So that's how our ranger works and plays in early levels. And I guess it's time to go and show you how he works on later levels. So level 4 ranger will get ability to replace spells. If you don't like any spells, if you don't use them, you can replace them. But today I'm showing you build and we will use spells that I like and that I use. So we won't change anything. But to now we are unlocking additional feet. And best idea for now is just go and put plus 1 into constitution and plus 1 into dexterity with ability improvement. This will increase our health points, our concentration checks and dexterity increases our damage dealt. So let's go to our level 5 and right now we will get additional spell from level 2. But most importantly we will get extra attack, so as most of the fighter classes you can right now attack 2 times in one turn. And that's massive actually, because if you remember you got feet that if you are attacking someone who already damaged, you are dealing additional damage. So basically you can start attacking full enemy with first attack and then second attack will do additional damage. That's why Ranger is very good and strong class. So for spells, you can pick speak with the animals just for fun and role playing stuff. Or you can go and pick pass without trace, this will give you plus 10 bonus to stealth checks. And if you sometime need this spell che stealth checks, this is just enough to go whenever you like, wherever you like, very stealthy and do what you need to do. So let's go and continue our journey as our ranger to level 6 of course. And now we can pick another favorite enemy. And now I recommend to pick ranger knight. So this will give you armor proficiency with heavy armor. In basic D&D rules we don't have this proficiency and most of the time when you play in hunter and ranger hunter of course, you will make in subclass just deep into one level of cleric for this proficiency. But in Baldur's Gate we got Ranger Knight, so we can have this proficiency in heavy armor. And again, for my build you will use bow, long bow, and use heavy armor. That's the idea of the build. 
and the natural explorer just pick any wasteland wonder you like for example we will pick fire we don't need to change any spells and we can go to level 7 on level 7 ranger will get more hp of course one more spell slot and this spell slot of level 2 so you can pick one more spell of level 2 or level 1 if you want to of course so for level 2 i recommend to go and pick some nice concentration spells maybe spike growth to make a large aoe area of spikes it's nice zoning tool so you can stand behind it and attack enemies from their distance before they come near you and then you use your sword of course and now you have defensive tactics for defensive tactics i recommend going with multi-attack defense it will protect you against additional auto crawls. <laughs> and yeah, I guess right now you can have a question why I'm picking uh, like heavy armor class, why I'm recommending you picking heavy armor with our Ranger Knight, because we will have some stealth problems. You know, we will have uh, disadvantage on stealth checks when we're wearing heavy armor, because we can cast to pass without trace, pass without trace. And when you cast in this, you will get plus 10 bonus, so all disadvantage just disappears from that. That's when build comes up online. And we go into level 8, of course, we get an additional class features, land stride, difficult terrain, and difficult terrain no longer slows us down. We can replace spell, we don't need it, and we get additional feet. And right now you can still have ability improvement and just dump everything into dexterity to have a lot more damage, stable damage, even plus one is very nice, but we can pick different traits to different feats. So nice feats will be lucky, it's just nice overall feat that can give you advantage on your next attack roll, that's a very good feat. If you don't like my build and don't want to stick with the longbow and instead want to, to go with a crossbow, for example, or you found a great crossbow and want to stick with it, you can have crossbow expert, because uh, right now you will have no disadvantage when you're attacking from the melee range with a crossbow, and piercing shots will trip inflict gaping wounds for twice as long for more turns. Sharp shooter, because right now we won't be able to have disadvantage when we are attacking into high ground, so there's no penalty from attacking from low ground to high ground. And we're getting sharp shooter all in. <laughs> That's really questionable, questionable feat. So our range weapon attacks with weapons that we are proficient with, and yeah, we are proficient with our bows have minus one penalty to attack rolls, so less likely that we're hitting our enemies. But we're dealing additional 10 damage, and that's a lot. But minus five is kinda 25% less chance that we hit enemy. And uh, if we're just dumping two into decks, that's 100% chance to inflict one damage on each attack roll. That's why I recommend to stick with dex ability improvement. And we're going to our level 9, of course. We're getting level 3 spells right now. And it will be depending on what you actually like. So maybe you want a little bit more damage, like some elemental damage, pick light and arrow for light and damage. Or you can go and pick plant growth. And this will make like hard terrain that is hard to move. But you don't have this disadvantage when you're moving on hard terrain because you are ranger hunter ranger so basically you can cast this stuff and walk freely on it but your enemies won't be able to do it so you just cast it run around them and just shoot them hit them with your skimmer or another weapon of choice just like that a level 10 will unlock our action height in plain sight and this gives ability to basically hide even in the fire of battle you pick additional favorite enemy now it's like pick whatever you like just whatever proficiency you want so keeper of the whale will work nicely and natural explorer you can pick for example cold damage resistance and we're going to level 11 we're gaining one more spell and right now you can pick whatever you haven't picked or you can pick protection from energy so we got already almost all protections we get protection from fire and cold and with this spell you can cast on yourself protection from acid or lighting or chunder damage so you can be protected from a lot of damage types additionally you will unlock new actions which is wally fire a cascade of magical roadheads and botkin arrows upon nearby foes 
and whirlwind attack. It's kind of the same, but with melee weapon. So you just stand and making this whirlwind attack with your sword. And it's nice if you're going with heavy armor in the heat of battle, you know, in the middle of the fight and start rolling like this. We don't need replacement spells. Our build is perfect and we're going to level 12, latest level of this game. And we get last feat. So again, pick whatever you like. You can go for ability improvement and have a little bit more constitution for better saving throws, for keeping your concentration, or you can go and pick, for example, Tov to have a little bit more HP on later levels. Or you can even go and have sharpshooter if you're brave enough. Or maybe again, you having your crossbow instead of your bow, go for crossbow expert. Something like this. So I will keep my Tov for this example and let's go and show this late game monster in the fight so late game ranger hunter let's go so fight starts you need to decide do you want to use spike crows for example to make hard terrain and uh, zone out enemies but you need to keep concentration on this spell so maybe you want to use just blend crows to make like hard terrain for your enemies so they want to be able to come near you as fast as possible but don't forget this one is concentration spell so if you don't want to use this as your concentration spell don't use it and maybe you want to use hunter mark on your enemy so for example then you just pick and use hunter mark on one of your enemies and basically just attack your enemy just like that that's all you need to do as a ranger next turn you can be able to reapply hunter's mark but for now, don't forget, we have additional attacks because uh, we are playing Ranger. So we can make two attacks from our bow. That's how you play Ranger. Then you end your turn. And then again, your next idea is to go and to reapply Hunter Mark on your next enemy. So you reapply Hunter Mark on your enemy of choice and always try to pick enemies that is already injured and attack them. We don't have any injured enemies right now. And don't forget, we already unlocked late game actions, which is uh, whirlwind attack and volley. So we can use instead of normal attack, range attack, we can use volley to inflict damage to multiple enemies that are standing nearby. As you can see, radius is really ra large. So we're just going and inflicting this volley shot. And you should be with like heavy armor, so you won't be like too scary to go in into the fight. So just go with your scimitar, inflict hunter mark on your enemy. And as you can see, this enemy is already damaged. So right now we will inflict additional damage and we can use Whirlwind attack. So that's what you want to do as late game hunter ranger. Just go and use Whirlwind attacks nearby enemies. And try to inflict as much damage as possible to every single of those enemies. If you fear someone, don't forget you have Ensnaring Strike as your level 1 spell. So you can just go and slow down your enemies with this Ensnaring Strike. And that's my build for Hunter Ranger. I hope you enjoyed it. And it will help you with your walkthrough of Baldur's Gate 3. Watch other Baldur's Gate 3 videos. They are funny and they are on the skin right now. And check out pinned comment. If there is already pinned comment.